My name is Paula Casal and I work in ethics and political philosophy. Shall I explain what the fields do? Okay. So ethics is more uh, generally concerned with uh, finding reasons to act one way or another and to evaluate different states of affairs. And political philosophy is a part of ethics, but it's more specifically concerned with reasons to change uh, policies, institutions, human relations more generally, in the family, society, across societies, across generations, across species. So I work in all these fields, but I specialize in a part of it which is called distributive justice, which is concerned with the fair distribution of burdens and benefits across society. So I'm doing chapter two, which is the compass, and everybody thinks this is the hardest, and it has been difficult. I am primarily responsible for section five, which already involves the discussion of justice in the family, society, across societies, generations, species, but I've been recruited to work on all the other sections as well. And uh, we will be setting the compass. Um, so we hope to finish before all the other chapters so that they can use our chapter for guidance, for the vocabulary, for the parameters, for various things. Well, it's very early days, um, but um, I thought, you know, whatever comes out, we have to try, right? So there are other indicators, there are other compasses, uh, they all have problems, and I think also I particularly like the fact that uh, Mark Florbers' uh, enterprise is very focused on solutions, no? not just measurements, not just, uh, you know, talking about the problems, but uh, coming up with uh, um, solutions, unlike, for example, the Sustainable Development Goals. So I am hoping that gathering so many people will, will come up with a lot of uh, good solutions for the world. There are big problems in all of the areas. Maybe if I had to choose one, I've, I've been working for academic stand against poverty, because I think the greatest is global poverty aggravated by climate change and falling into uh, negative uh, feedback of um, mm. poverty, is not at the moment the main cause of uh, climatic instability, is the bridge that have mainly created climate change. But uh, as climate change increases global poverty, the poor will be increasingly forced to just concentrate on day-to-day -day survival and not think about the best long-term use of the resources, which would lead to greater aggravation of environmental problems, leading to more poverty, and falling into this spiral is my greatest worry. Regarding global poverty and, and climate change, I advocate um, global environmental taxes, progressive global environmental taxes. And uh, regarding the climate change of future generations, um, I um, am trying to combat the view that all we owe to the future is to leave enough rainforest, enough biodiversity, enough climatic instability. Because many people in my field um, contest the possibility of applying other principles like egalitarian principles across generations. I resist that, but even if I have to accept that all we can talk is about thresholds, I want the threshold to be applied differently so that even if we are stuck with um, talking about some limits, we don't have to say we have to live enough for the future. We can say in the conservationist rather than conservative way, once we have enough ourselves, we have lost our justification for further destruction. So even if we don't want to be egalitarians across society, we, we can still um, justify more progressive policies than other of my colleagues uh, would, would grant. And then in other areas, um, for example, in the family, I have um, uh, argued against uh, subsidizing the production of children for their contribution to growth or technical change. I think it's better to target the benefits to protect the children and to create uh, gender equality. And one of the areas of gender equality that um, work more is the um, occupational choice of women, which um, has been you know, undermined by the maximization of occupational choice for, for men. And in uh, social justice, I have uh, argued also against this idea that w all we owe to other, each other is uh, a threshold or a minimum, more in favor of uh, more egalitarian and prioritarian uh, policies. And uh, also um, in terms of um, not just income, but um, 
other non-pecuniary aspects of uh, labor inequality, because as you probably know, there are jobs that are very well paid, creative, interesting, prestigious, you know, everything, and other jobs that have just no redeeming features whatsoever. No? They are, have all of the disadvantages of um, um, monotony, uh, dirtiness, uh, risk, dangers, um, risk of uh, unemployment, um, low promotional opportunities, uh, no capacity to learn, or get better, or get out of the situation in which you are. So what else have we left? Uh, animals. Um, well, in animals, I come from Spain. So you know, it's a bullfighting country. So I have um, been campaigning against uh, cultural and religious uh, justifications for the torture of animals. But um, I've also been working since 1998 in the Great Day Project. And I'm, I also have an interest in evolution of humanity and other primates. And so I have uh, specialized in um, the rights of, we could call it mammalian persons. No? So uh, chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, bonobos, some um, dolphins and uh, whales and uh, elephants, which exhibit the uh, features that philosophers associate with uh, personhood. I think global taxation is feasible. Global environmental taxation is feasible, is necessary. You don't have to start with very high rates. So I think it really is possible. It's just a matter of you know, uh, political will, but it really is possible. And it could make a massive difference. I mean, if the taxes are on the environment, even if we didn't use the, the funding that we can gather extremely well, it would already be uh, beneficial because of the effect that it would have on uh, resource conservation and climate change. So, well, the other um, uh, policy, which I think is feasible, and could make a very large difference is to grant access to the sea to the uh, currently 40 something, 44, maybe some kind up to 48 developing countries which are currently landlocked. And um, this is something which um, has been mentioned in the Sustainable Development Goals. The introduction is, says that they are committed to the implementation of the Almaty uh, Program of Action. But then, when you read the list of goals, um, they say other things about developing infrastructure and more general things, but there's no proposal to uh, uh, create corridors or grant them access to the sea in some other way. So this is the um, campaign that I'm running at the moment.